Welcome to Alien Invasion Gaming. My name is Roy, and in this video we take a look at how I've made over 400 million rubles in Escape from Tarkov. Let's get started. Alright, so before I get into my specific methodology, I just want to highlight this is just one of many ways that you can make money in Tarkov. Uh, other options are PvP and just selling everybody's gear that you uh, kill. Uh, it could be hitting labs and uh, pulling out a lot of high valuable items there. It could be uh, doing the Bitcoin farm and just uh, selling the Bitcoins every time uh, one gets produced. You could also be making uh, crafts in your hideout and then putting those up on the flea market. There are lots of ways to make money. Uh, the reason that I'm putting up this video is, is because this video is really good for those people who really aren't strong on PvP or want to avoid PvP and still amass a bunch of rubles. The way that I do this is, is that I hit the stashes that are located outside the mall and interchange. With the interchange map, most of the action I find happens in the mall itself as people are rushing for the electronic stores or maybe they're going for killer kills or maybe they're just looking for PvP and so they're going into the mall because I, they know that's where most people go. I stay on the outside and I hit uh, as many of the 18 stashes outside the mall that I possibly can, plus a couple other bags or crates that might be convenient along the way. Uh, later in this video, I will show you an actual run uh, that I have done and um, show you just exactly you know what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm going to put up a picture now, uh, basically a graph. It's fairly you know it's fairly big, so it may be difficult to see in the video. But basically, the 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 little symbols with the uh, teardrops are the locations of the stashes on Interchange. And so depending upon where you spawn, you want to work your way through towards your extract and just hit the stashes along the way. Uh, sometimes you'll get four or five stashes. Sometimes you'll be getting 15 of the stashes. And it just really depends on where you spawn and where your extract is. Uh, the, uh, the point, though, is, is that you just stay to the outside of the mall. And you just, you know, might run into a couple of scavs. Uh, you may also run into players, fellow stash runners, or people that know people run stashes and they're looking for PvP. So this is not foolproof. You will die running uh, these stashes, but you don't die at a high frequency. And my experience has been that you get out way more loot than you lose. All right, so I've talked about the concept. Um, I'm going to now put up a video of an actual run. This is an offline raid so that I can do it from a continuity perspective, but this would work just the same as a real raid. Uh, in this video, I'm going to start behind the Emercon extract. Uh, that's one of the uh, spawn points. And basically, I'm going to work my way towards the railway extract. I will speed up the video as we go, and I will put a little graphic up in the corner uh, of the map showing you as I'm going. Uh, I would suggest that you pay close attention to the actual stash, and I will try to visually show you in the video uh, where they're located, because sometimes they can be hard to see. All right, let's, uh, let's do a run. Okay, for this example, I've spawned behind the uh, Emercon Extract Tents. Uh, I am using uh, one of the new uh, F5 backpacks, but really any backpack. Um, I wouldn't go smaller than like a scab backpack will do. Um, I like the Black Rock rigs because it gives me a 2x2 slot for some additional large items if I need it. Uh, any gun will work, um, you know, whatever your personal preference is. Alright, we're going to move to the first stash. This stash is here by the rock. None of those items I would take. Here is the second stash. It's in these bushes. We're right next to the uh, back of Ollie. If you come in here and you can see there's a barrel. That's all I would take from that stash. The next stash is over here by the other boxes. I would take all of that. Now, there is a bag located here on the side of the map. It's not on the map of the picture that I'm, uh, I've got up right now, but there is a bag here. Um, Typically, you can get some food items, some meds will spawn here sometimes, Salua's, um, CMS kits, and then there's a duffel. Sometimes there's nothing in the duffel. Let's go to the next uh, stash. Now, this is the um, set of trees 
that is basically between Emmercon and the Barrel Fire. Um, I'm sure many of you know where that is on the side of the map. This is still the side of Ollie. Here you can see it's uh, nestled up against this bush. Now, I wouldn't take the cigarettes unless you need uh, them for your task for uh, turning them in. The next, um, uh, at the barrel, there is a uh, duffel bag, so we're going to take a look at it. Um, I would use the Vita Juice. Um, I would take the fleece. Uh, we may swap it out later if um, space becomes a premium. The next stash after this is right next to it, in fact. It's in these between these two trees right here. It can be hard to see. Uh, I find that people often miss it. But it's right between those two trees next to the barrel, and that's sort of your frame of reference. I don't take tea plugs. Okay, now this stash is located between a large tree and a small tree. It sort of lines up pretty much exactly with the road and the ultra sign. So if you're having difficulty finding it, um, come along the rail and then approach it from this side, sort of uh, in line with the road, and you should see it. But basically look for large tree, small tree together. That's sort of the visual clue for uh, finding it. I will take the croutons and the tarcola and the gun. I don't typically take hard drives. I'm going to take this one just in case uh, we don't get a lot of good loot, but I don't really recommend taking the hard drives. Just a note here that sometimes meds and food items can spawn here in the truck, so check it out. The next stash spawns right in front of the... Um, uh, ultra sign right next to this large uh, pine tree. Well, medium-sized tree, I guess. And uh, you can search it. Now, I took that gun, but um, if space was at a premium, I probably wouldn't. Um, I think you're typically only going to get 11 or 12k, so that works out to be like 5, 6k a slot. So I'm not sure that i take it, you know, or I'll keep it. Again, I'll drink the apple juice again just to uh, work on my metabolism. If your metabolism is already high enough, you don't need to do it, but um, I definitely wouldn't take it out of the raid from a selling perspective unless you just had tons of space. There's also an ammo box here that we're going to check. There's nothing in it. Now, I do recommend keeping your eye out for ammo. Um, you know, the best in class uh, ammo for each gun is definitely worth, you know, a per round basis over a thousand rubles, so it's definitely worth uh, getting. The next cache we're going to hit is uh, going to be here in what I call Scavlands. From a frame of reference, so you're looking for this uh, billboard, and you're looking for sort of a gully. Um, you can see that there's a uh, bush here, there's a, a small tree here, and if you look at the road, you can see that you're aligned with the blue van. And so that's how you can tell you know, how to find the stash. We'll just take a quick look at it. All right. Now, before I move on, I'm going to go check the pink suitcase over here in the white van. Usually, I'll try to swing around the side of the van as I open it just to get some cover. So that's a great find, SSD and sugar and both. Now we're starting to have space problems, so we're going to have to make some really intelligent decisions on um, loot. Now obviously there can be scavs here. I don't I don't have scavs because I'm doing an offline raid, but you're going to need to be careful coming through here. But I do uh, take a, I suggest taking a quick run through this uh, little Kwanzaa hut or whatever it's called. You can get food items and you can get ammo on this tray, on this uh, table. I mean. Okay, let's keep uh, moving down the road. There is a uh, weapon crate here next to this hut. So we're going to take a quick look in. Monster claw, which we will take. And then there is a pink suitcase over here. Which we're going to take a quick look at. Now my extract is a uh, railway. So depending upon how much loot I've received, we'll take the diary for sure. 
depending on how much loot I've received, I may just head straight for that. But since this is an example run, I'm going to do the full run and uh, show you the next uh, stashes. So if you head towards the um, van that's uh, crashed through the gate, what you're going to do is you're going to keep going over until you get to the go-kart area in front of Idea. Now, I have elite um, endurance and fairly high strength, so I'm moving at a good clip, and I don't run out of breath very easily. You, your results may vary depending upon your endurance and strength level. You could also take a stim if you wanted to help. Uh, so we'll definitely take the metal scissors. That's good value. I will just do a quick uh, little search here in the back of this uh, ambulance. There's nothing interesting. The nice thing with those tires is you don't always have to jump them. Just try running into them. They should push you over. All right, here's the next stash. Now, the car battery used to be really good money, but it's not really good money right now, so I'm not going to take it. Also, you know, I've, I've made a mistake here by filling up my rig. I don't have a slot to swap out magazines, so you're going to want to be careful of that. In fact, I'm going to toss the hard drive so that I don't accidentally toss one of my mags if I get into a fight and I reload. Now, back to helping find this. So, there are a bunch of bushes in between the track, or within the inner circle of the track. What you're looking for is basically the last sort of large large bush and then a couple of small bushes together. If you're looking at the idea entrance, it's they're going to be on the right of the, um, uh, of the entrance, so that you can come over here, and it's right here in front of the mall. So here, I'll come back here a little bit. You can see it's right there uh, in the front of the uh, mall, just lined up for that direction. The next stash is over in this little bush next to this little hut. Some people call it an ice cream hut. Whatever you call it, it's this bush right here. Here's the hut, here's the bush, here's the stash. I wouldn't take the Zeno. Um, if you've got like some sort of money case, you would definitely take the Rubles, um, but I'm not going to take any of that. I mean, I could have taken the Rubles, but it was 600 Rubles, and this is an example. Now, uh, I'm going to hit, there's a weapon crate here on the crane treads, so we're going to take a look at this. Gun, so we'll take the gun. Now, there is a stash under this overpass. You have to crawl like get uh, crouched in order to uh, get it. By the way, I would recommend when you do loot it, turn around. So, um, I don't really have space, and I don't rec really believe that any of this is going to be more value than what I've got already. Maybe the fleece, but I'd have to get rid of the fleece plus a couple of other items to... Well, no, I could probably do... It's a toss-up. That, that PP-19 and the two fleece, I think, is a top up uh, toss-up, so I'm just going to leave it. When you're trying to get out of here, go to the edge. Wow, did it ever get foggy in this run? Uh, anyway, I want it to rain. So, right here, next to this red hut, is a weapon case. So we're going to take a quick look at it. Um, if I had the space, I might take the uh, quad. I found that it's not necessarily a great value. It takes up three slots. And so you'd want to be getting quite a bit for it. I don't remember off the top of my head if I'd be able to get 30k for it, so I'm going to leave it. I'm going to hop over the railings here. Apologies that it got foggy. It was really nice when I started this run. Now, there's typically um, something here on the uh, barrel. Now, flyers by themselves uh, aren't worth the value, and again, I'm trying to keep a slot open for my mag, so I wouldn't take anything. I wouldn't swap anything here for it. We're going to take a quick look here at the cable school. You can get food and medical items here. We're going to take a quick look here at the Jenny. Uh, right now it's a hand drill, but you can get anything from blue fuel, gray fuel, dry fuel, fuel conditioner, tools, you know, random spawn. It doesn't always spawn, just to be clear, but you can get, uh, sometimes you can get uh, fuel items there. Okay, so here is the the next stash that I would hit in this loop. If you're trying to locate it, you're looking for this large rock in this tent. This is the blue wall, right uh, in next to Scavland. So you would come through there, um, and you're looking for sort of the, the collection of trees here on the point. 
and then it's uh, right here in front of the, the big tree. So I will take the nails. If I didn't have a helmet, um, I would take this helmet. Um, but because I'm full, I'm not going to. Now this stash can be very hard for people to find. There's not a lot of really good landmarks right next to it in order to find it. You'll notice that what I did was I made a, a line straight from the last patch over there um, and did the, 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 the dip into the valley and then come over here. You will see that the tree that it's next to is smaller in diameter than everything around it. So like if you looked around, um, you're looking for sort of like three large trees and then this one sort of on this side. Um, it's going to take quite a bit of practice. If you're still having difficulty trying to find it, uh, I would suggest take a look at the train car and then make sure you're seeing that little bit of rubble on the left. If you're not seeing that sort of, you know, perspective, then you're probably at the wrong tree. Well, if you don't see the cast, you know you're at the wrong tree. But basically, you can try to use some, some of those landmarks to get you where you need to be. Um, now, the diary is an interesting choice, and so is the 7N39. So I'm going to actually take the diary and the 7N39 over the police. Um, actually, here, we're going to do this, so I keep the slot open for my reload. Uh, now, the wires, wires can be hit or miss. Sometimes they're as low as 6K, sometimes they'll be 11K. If I'm taking a look at this, I mean, if I was going to swap something... You know, I probably at this point would swap the gun, just so I've got another slot. I know that I've got three stashes left to hit, so maybe I'll get something of high value out of there. And uh, let's uh, move on to the next stash. So the next stash is located in all of the rubble. And you're basically going to want to go past the first set of rubble, and then hook left. And you're basically looking for this big pile, where basically there's these slabs pointing up to the sky. Um, I know that's not necessarily unique, you can see the over there is the same way, but you're basically looking for the, the rubble that's right next to the railway, and in between these two slabs is the staff. Alright, this time I'll take this. Uh, I will take the flash pipe, and I forgot that the flash drive will actually go into the sick container, so that frees up a couple of slots. I'm going to take the sodium. I'm not going to take the side armor um, or the cricket. At this point, um, uh, I wouldn't get the money back. You know, I'm aiming for at least 10,000 rubles per slot, as close as I can get to that. Okay, now the next one is basically right across from the rubble. On the other side of the train tracks is this bush. And in between sort of these two sets of bushes is the um, second to last uh, stack. Plug TRS and SC193. So I've got the slot, so I'm going to take the SC193, but it doesn't sell very well, and there's only 13 rounds. So if there's something that's a single slot more valuable in the next uh, stash, I'm definitely going to be tossing that ammo. So the last stash is right against the wall, and it's against the rub with the rubble that's against the wall. So you can see where I came from the. Um, uh, the bushes and just come along the wall you, and when you get to the rubble you're looking for this uh, barrel cap. Now the condensed milk I think is actually going to sell better than the ammo so I'm going to do that swap. I still have one slot here I noticed and so between the eight, the, the rip and the SB193 I'm going to take the SB193 although I do think it's a toss up in uh, cash. Now before I hit the extract, there's one last place that I normally check on these runs, and it's what I call the loading dock here next to the railway extract. It's this little covered space that has a bunch of materials in it next to the train. There are two spawn points. There's this four set of barrels right here. And you can see that it spawned um, metal scissors. And so because I'm right next to the extract, I'm going to fill up my last two by one slot. And then over here, there can be tools, etc. There's nothing there. And so at this point, I'm going to head off to the extract. Okay, so that's it for the run. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about um, some of the items to look for in your own run. What I have here is a picture of items that I have pulled out of cash runs during today uh, in preparation for this uh, video. And they're just a 
collection of items to basically watch out for and prioritize. So the top group are items that I would prioritize uh, keeping. Uh, I'm not going to go through individual items, but by and large, each one of these items will return um, at least 9,000 rubles a slot, maybe more. And uh, so therefore, these are the items you want to prioritize. The items in the uh, second group represent items that will give you good value, but they might not give you good per slot value. And so if you are, don't have a lot of loot, definitely you want to pick up these items. Uh, but if you have a lot of loot, especially of the upper pile, then you definitely don't want to be, you know, prioritizing these items over the top pile. Uh, and so just wanted to give you that sort of graphic as you uh, look through the um, uh, look through the cache contents. If you've gotten to the end of this video, well, thank you. It's a very long video, but I do hope that it brings you some value as you are trying to build up your uh, ruble pile in Escape from Tarkov. If you have any questions on this uh, video, feel free to drop them in the comments. Uh, also, you're welcome to stop by my Twitch stream. Uh, I stream Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7.30 p.m. Central to 11 p.m. Feel free to ask me any questions about this video or Tarkov or any of the other games that I've been playing. That's it for this video. Thanks again for watching. I will see you in the next one.